Uh, Real Atheology is wanting to know if you have oh, any awesome. opinions on uh, uh, modern atheists like J.H. Sobel and Graham Hopkins. Right, cool. So Real Atheology are a great group of atheists. They have a YouTube channel, uh, an excellent podcast. And one of their guys was on our channel debating Greg Pine, Father Pine, and then recently did a debate with uh, Catholic apologist Trent Horn. Um, really intelligent folks, um, really interested in kind of uh, understanding what Christians say yeah. before showing them why they think they're wrong, as right, opposed right, to... Right, no, good. Yeah, I think yeah. they're really doing a great job at raising the level of discourse. Yeah. So, thoughts on Graham Oppie? Have you read much of Oppie? I, or I don't I, know the other bloke. I only know Oppie because he's an Aussie. Uh, that's right. Yeah, he is. Sobel was the other. Sobel. I don't know. Do you know what's the written? What's the first? J. H. H. Sobel. It, um, Jordan. S O B E L. I think I. I, I know. read. I read Oppie's Jordan introduction Sobel? to to atheism. Jordan Howard Sobel. Okay. Yeah, I've read a little bit, um, but go go ahead. You 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 because I, I don't have much to say about Oppie. Well, you know what's funny is Oppie and Phaser had a debate on capturing right. Christianity's channel. Saw that, yeah. Did you see yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And for about 20 minutes, they talked about a chair and defining what a chair was. And like, <laughs> damn it, this is why we need structured debates and not conversations between philosophers. Um, but I remember reading Oppie and just thinking that, yeah, that atheists would benefit tremendously from reading him as opposed to like Hitchens or something. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I, no. Um, but he's just, he does. is a is, is a serious customer. He's not. We're not. We're not talking Dawkins here or or Hitchens. We're talking about someone who's who's an actual philosopher, an actual thinker. Um, and I, I agree on on that on that point. Um, so I think I've read um, Sobel or Sobel, um, and I remember he made a, a distinction which which I think is. Um, I, I wasn't aware that he was an atheist, uh, but he made an interesting distinction, and I think a helpful distinction between um, an efficient cause that is sustaining and one that is generating, hmm. um, which you want to say, okay, yeah, no, I, I already understand that. But to have someone lay it out and, and specify it, I think is helpful because uh, for um, when, when we talk about God as an efficient cause, we want to say that he's both. He doesn't just... Mm -hmm generate doesn't just bring things into existence he also sustains them in existence for as long as they exist and that's what we've been talking about in in these arguments when we're talking about the kind of causality that god is exercising in these arguments it's a su sustaining causality it's not simply bringing things into existence although he does that as well um but they can't not only do they need god to bring them into existence they cannot, I cannot continue to exist without God also sustaining me in existence. Um, now, when we make the distinction between an, an accidental causal series and a, an essential causal series, we can say that an accidental cause is responsible for bringing things into existence, but not necessarily for sustaining them in existence. Whereas in an essential causal series, the efficient cause is responsible also for sustaining them in existence. So I, this was a, a distinction that I came across in, in his writings that I thought was was very helpful. Um, it's one that you will find in Aquinas, although I don't think he speaks about it in, in those terms. Um, but yeah, that's that's my comment. If if I hopefully I'm I'm getting him right here. I think that um, uh, he seemed from what I read of of his work, he seemed to be a, a very sharp uh, thinker. If you like that clip, be sure to like and subscribe. Cheers.